Welcome to the first Shakedown Nation, the Drive Auto Racing Show where we, you the viewers and we here, put our thoughts together on the racing topics of the moment. I'm Leo Parente, you know me from the regular Shakedowns and... I'm Christina Thompson, you've seen me on Fast Lane Daily as well as on the Auto Show and Racing Circuit. So Leo, what is Shakedown Nation all about? Well, we want this to be a little different look at the racing world, using your comments out there and questions for you to vote on, to answer, and get your opinions on the show. Wait, so we're gonna let the viewers decide what's on the show? Yeah, well, you know, maybe a little bit, okay? Because I guess we gotta be a little careful. What do you do with a comment like this? Uh, here's Altruistic00. Zero Zero. We love you, but Indy 500 cars look so weird and ugly, like squid go backward. I guess I can see it. Or how about Toad Boy Zero? He writes, F1 is like caviar. Well, that makes sense. But then he writes, IndyCar is like a scotch egg. It looks good on the outside, but dive in and it's bland, dreary, and generally off-putting. I'm not sure I agree, but those definitely look like Marco Andretti's eyes after not winning another Indy 500. Is that bad? <laughs> yeah, bad joke. Well, we like your passion for auto racing. So yes, we will be reading your comments. And because this is about you, before every Shakedown Nation show, over on our Drive Internet sites, slash drive.tv, Twitter, and Facebook, We'll post links to racing questions and polls for you to take. That for now, we're gonna park on the Drive Facebook page. And if you, you noticed, you went over there, we have the first one for this show, it's coming up. Coming up in just a minute. So you can vote, share your opinion to be part of Shakedown Nation. And Shakedown Nation is gonna be once a month. Every Sunday on Drive Central, check in to find out when we're gonna run our Shakedown show. Because uh, you never can get enough Spinelli, right? So Drive Central. Whatever. Well, here we go. Let's jump in. First up, it's things you may have missed. Here are some things you may have missed with IndyCar, Le Mans, and a new Toyota GT86 race car. One that doesn't drift. You're just saying that for me, right? No, <laughs> you may have missed that the IndyCar race in Detroit after the Indy 500 had two races. To spark attendance at the race and to increase the coverage on TV. But the Saturday crowd did not show up. There was no one there, really. Yeah, two days of IndyCar on TV did double the viewership. Still, it was only two million of the 115 million TV households in America. Yeah, and you know, half that number were probably old people who haven't figured out how to change the channel on their smart TV, <laughs> no? But you know what, I really like the two race idea. Aussie V8 supercars, they're very popular because they use a multi-race format, and shorter sprint races for IndyCar was well, gonna differentiate themselves more from sports car racing, endurance racing, and those long NASCAR races. So you know what? I say go for it. But that first experiment in Detroit, I don't know what happened on Saturday, why they didn't get the crowd. Well, I guess they have a few more chances coming up with more two-day races in the future, so we'll see what happens. They're going to do the test more than a couple of times in, in this year. So, Did you all see IndyCar announce new plans for their future? IndyCar announces new tech rules to stop racing spec cars. Well, not exactly and not so fast. Yeah. I mean, fans kind of hate that the single-make Dallara cars all look alike, so IndyCar announces how they'll make the cars look different and go faster so they can set new speed records. All to get more fans, right? Right, right. But, but the plan but. will take about eight years out through 2021. So read the link below to get the full story of what's going on here. But the cars, you know, they're still going to look the same for 2014, so they're not really changing all that rapidly. That new look won't be two more years down the road till 2015. It's an aero kit on, again, the same spec chassis, but they hope it will look somewhat different. An IndyCar, to me, is kind of play, overplaying that use of the word tech, because really all they're doing is just turning up the turbo boost on those engines and some aero tweaks. Oh, and yeah. by the way, when you read the 2014 changes, there's a hint in there about DRS, that drag reduction system flappy wing that F1 uses to right. create the kind of artificial passes, so who knows, maybe they're gonna do that, I don't know. Well, I got a quote for you from Derek Walker, who is the new IndyCar president of competition and operations. He said that it's the lose drag, go faster pill. Uh-oh, Dr. Walker's in the house, uh, whatever. <laughs> Listen, the changes, I may argue they're not quick enough. You know, here's an example, 2016, they're just talking about tweaking the tire compound, again, to get more grip, maybe go faster. And then there's these little steps that'll continue through 2021. Now, I'm old, but geez, at this pace, I'll be dead or IndyCar will. You know, I think they only got a couple of years to get this right. And by the way, the debate has already begun about these changes because the competition, the racing's been really close right now. So why make changes? I mean, everyone knows the cars are ugly. And here's the deal. They're slower than they were 20 years ago. So I don't know what they want to do about it, but I guess at the end of the day, I'm gonna blame Ari Leyendijk. 
<laughs> well, I mean, IndyCar has finally figured out that speed is their best selling point, and Ari holds those records. Fastest qualifying all the way back in 1996 at 237 miles per hour, and fastest Indy 500 race. His 1990 win at an average speed of 185.9, which was only just broken this year by Tony Kanaan. So IndyCar, they want to go back to record-setting speeds. Like you said, they figured out that speed is the big secret here. And in fairness, they want to do it safely for the drivers and cost-effectively for the team. So that's why I guess we've got this step-by-step -step rollout. We'll see what happens. Yeah, well, we want it all, right? So do you think they should... Um, would you watch more IndyCar if it was faster or right now it's really, really exciting close racing? Well, it's exciting close racing, but I would love to see them go faster and still have that competition. I mean, raise the bar on both ends. So you can have it all. Why not? And you know, they're looking for a director of uh, marketing. You want, uh, <laughs> all right, all right. Well, you may have also missed these stories about the Le Mans 24-hour race. First, the cars are testing this weekend, June 9th, to get ready for the June 22nd race. However, the green GTH2 will not be running at the test or the race. This hydrogen fuel cell car was supposed to be the 2013 Garage 56 special entry to Le Mans, showcase green technology. Well, no more. They couldn't get the car to work. But it looks so cool. For an alien. Yeah, I don't think it looks cool at all, but <laughs> got gills and small French children get sucked into that, so whatever. And those are the hydrogen tanks. How is that safe? Anyway. Well, apparently they're still working on that. So last year, the special entry spot was the Delta Wing, and next year it's set for a Nissan Electric. Yeah, Nissan's going to build their own special car. Now, I know a number of you fans out there, you viewers, question the collaboration of green tech and racing and fast cars, but, you know, technology's not the devil. Despite what you guys seem to think when you comment about the Porsche 918 and battery packs and curves and blah, blah, freaking blah, technology, not bad. Oh, and by the way, that next year Nissan Garage 56 Electric entry, Oh yeah. When Nissan pulled the money and the engine from Delta Wing, they also stole the designer, Ben Bowlby, the guy that did this Delta Wing. Mm. He's doing the Nissan, not just the Garage 56 car, but the new LMP1 Nissan that's going to compete against Audi, Toyota, and Porsche's coming to that class. So next year is going to be cool. But that doesn't negate this year. Well, more Le Mans you may have missed. The ACO FIA sanctioning bodies for Le Mans made last minute balance of performance adjustments to the LMP1 and GTE cars to make the competition closer, right? That's what they use balance performance for, yes. Yes, so in the top class, P1, they gave the gas powered cars like the Toyotas three more gallons of fuel capacity versus the diesel Audis. Less pit stops or the opportunity to create some more power, yeah, Leo? Yeah, the Audis had been winning the races, uh, and they had one more shot to make more parity for Le Mans. And guess what? The ACO FAI pulled the trigger. Well, in GT, the new Porsche 911, for example, got more power via a bigger air intake. So, Leo, who are your favorites? Well, this balanced performance thing does change the game. And, and actually, in an earlier shakedown, we talked about sandbagging companies running their car to get this balance of performance adjustment for Le Mans. So I still think, you know, it's going to be better for Toyota. I, I guess I'll pick Toyota. No, I think I'll pick, I think I'll still pick Audi. At the end of the day, Toyota needs to prove that they can win Le Mans. They've tried it all sorts of times. And by the way, that gets me to the segue of make sure that you watch with us on our 25 hours of the 24 hours of Le Mans viewing party, live stream, whatever the heck we're doing because we're going to cover all the cars and all the nuances of going on. And you're invited, too, obviously, to drop out. Oh, well, thank you. Full day with you. See you all there. Oh, my god. OK. All right, and the final you may have missed is a new Toyota GT86 race car. Japanese race car constructor Dome released information about its new Toyota GT86 GT300 car for the Super GT series that races in Japan. The new car is really a demonstrator for a new chassis the series wants to sell to race teams. The chassis is lower cost versus traditional carbon fiber due to an innovative composite construction technique. Which we're going to explain to you right now. No, we're not. Because <laughs> we don't know. Well, the series wants the GT300 class more focused on Japanese built cars using this chassis versus the more expensive imported GT3 machines currently dominating the class. And yes, this Toyota will race against the sister Subaru BRZ already out there racing GT300, but that is a factory effort. This dome is just kit car stuff. 
Yeah, but kit car stuff that's going to put more cars on the grid, so that's kind of a good thing. And it's obviously cool. Everyone loves Toyota GT86. It's another one of those. But I think we've got to be careful because it is another spec chassis car. And, and that's just like what we talked about in IndyCar. But spec chassis is also in DTM, British Touring Car, Aussie V8 Supercars, NASCAR, all the single make series like Porsche Cup, Ferrari, Lamborghini, and all the spec classes like LMPC in Le Mans Racing. You know, if we're not careful, the only technology and innovation in racing will be F1 and those Le Mans cars like the Audi and Toyota. But I'm just saying. Oh, of course you are. Because that's what I do at Shakedown. Yes, okay, <laughs> fine. What's next? What do we got next? It's time for Shakedown Nation Race Fans Know Best. We asked you over at Drive on Facebook this question. With F1 in Canada this weekend, the Austin Grand Prix established, and now Bernie Ecclestone Bucks backing the New York and New Jersey GP, does North America have the right number of F1 races? Too many or still too few? Let's see what the fans said. So y'all voted, and it looks like you think three is the right number. Okay. <laughs> of course, the second place is there's never enough F1 in North America. Hey, thank you for voting. We're going to do more of that. It's going to be over at Facebook on Drive. Drive on Facebook. One of those. <laughs> Facebook. Thanks. And now on to our next segment. Interview quotes in the racing news. Something we're calling, they said, they meant, WTF, here's what they should have said. This week, the quotes are all about drivers copying attitude. Lotus F1 racer Roman Grosjean called Toro Rosso driver Daniel Ricciardo an idiot for the Monaco crash in the steward's office when the two were called in for review. Grosjean added after, I didn't want to waste the energy yelling, screw you, what the hell were you thinking? So I just said, you're an idiot, and that was it. You know, I think he said what he meant, so there's no translation there. But what he should have said, frankly, probably nothing. Because whether that was a Toro Rosso brake check or brain fade, Grosjean was in control of the pass. He's the guy trying to make the move. And actually, it kind of looked bad for both, because that's Grosjean trying to make the pass. <laughs> so what he should have said, frankly, probably nothing. Also from Monaco, McLaren's Sergio Perez was putting on a dive bomb late breaking show to save his reputation as a racer. And it was working until he came up on one Kimi Raikkonen, who displayed the classic door slam response. After the race, when asked whether a veteran like Kimi should sit down young Perez and coach him up, Kimi gave this, that won't help. Maybe someone should punch him in the face. Yeah, what did Kimi mean? I have no time for your antics, little man. You can uh, try that stuff on others, but not me, not Kimmy. <laughs> what is he, what he should have said? Nice moves, kid, but stop trying to be me, Kimmy, against me, Kimmy. There's only one, in the car and in the press room, so there you go. <laughs> back to IndyCar, back at Detroit. In race two, on a restart, one of six or eight or 26, it was a major crash fest, uh, Penske racer Will Power got punted from behind, starting a huge multi-car crash. Will Power then calls out ex-four-time champion Sebastian Bourdais on TV, saying he once was a champ, now he's a chump. What he meant? <laughs> what he meant is great. Drive like an ass, and I'm going to call you the same. What he should have said? I think he said the right thing. Bourdais got what he deserved. Good on him. All right. Speaking of Will Power, anyone remember this from him last year? <laughs> Well, we've got a trend going, apparently. This is another IndyCar Sebastian, Sebastian Saavedra, after he got taken out in Detroit. What he meant? Really? Do I need to translate that? I don't think so. Enough. And finally, the F1 Sebastian, Sebastian Vettel, who says, I might not stay much longer, referring to staying with his Infinity Red Bull racing team that got him three championships and F1 in general. <sighs> what Vettel meant? Well, actually, he was negotiating his contract in the media. What he should have said, probably something more like this. Hey, Red Bull, I got Ferrari on the other line. Are we good here? Is Weber gone? You got my contract numbers. You know, are we going to do this, or should I keep talking to the red cars? Because there is this German Ferrari legacy that you know, I'd like to kind of kick over to my side of the table. That's what he should have said, because that's what he really meant. Anyway, it's finally time for my favorite segment, a shakedown rant. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, I mean, I thought maybe I could do a little rant this time. I know that's your thing, but... Nah, you know what? I'm tired of hearing myself talk. What do you got? Well, I've been thinking about in-car cameras and why they're so important to the popularity of auto racing. You know, why aren't we modernizing the technology here with motorcycle racing like MotoGP? You can see the rider work. With race cars, it's not so great. You know, not in sports cars, only in the helmet and F1 and IndyCar. I know in-car cameras have been around for a while, but I'd like to be more immersed in the action. It's like 
going to a football game and sitting behind a tall guy. I've done that and you can't see the action. Right? <laughs> well, us shorties are kind of like hiding back there. It's, you know, it's exciting, but you can't really see what's going on. You're not really involved. It takes away from the interest and the appeal. So I think that's why drifters probably pop out of their cars to let the crowd see them, make it more exciting, right? So, Leo, I know you love the tech of the equipment. <laughs> I think it would just be better if we could really see the athletes doing their job and just make the racing more interactive. I mean, for example, Red Bull was working on an interactive 360 degree camera on an F1 car. It might not be perfect, but this camera would give the viewer control on what they're seeing and get them more involved in the race. So really, in-car cameras are gonna make it more interactive and essentially, I think they'll save racing. I think that was great and I think I'm out of a rant job. Fantastic. Hey. And I loved our first show. Me too. Cool. I guess I we'll see what you guys think. Well, I know what you're going to say, and it better be good, because uh, we love doing this, we want to do more, and we want you to answer those questions every month. Shakedown Nation, welcome. Now let's see a passport or something, for God's sakes. <laughs>